Good day and welcome back to the Hopkins demonstration forest for part 14 of what is a forest. And today I wanted to go over two more measurements that we typically take when we're doing a forest inventory plot. And those two measurements are looking up at the crown closure, how much leaf or needle is uh, covering up that sky and sunlight uh, or space it's taking up. Also, we're gonna be looking at the live crown ratio. How much of the trees, those taller plants, uh, have uh, live branches uh, for their percentage of height. So let's talk about, uh, real quick, the first one, uh, and that's gonna be the live crown ratio. Now, if you remember back from our last video where we went through and measured tree height, we're gonna be doing the same thing. Uh, what you're gonna be doing is taking a clinometer and measuring the overall height of a tree. Uh, you remember the clinometer? Uh, it's that, uh, I call it fancy automatic protractor, but it measures the vertical angles. Uh, we use that protractor, uh, measure the height of the tree, but then we're also gonna get a couple of other measurements uh, on the tree. And a lot of times this can be estimated. So once we get the total tree height, uh, the example here uh, being 95 feet, then we need to assess the live portion. How much of that tree, if you look behind me, you see that there's not a lot of branches on the lower portion of these Douglas fir. So as those trees grow up, those branches uh, get shaded out. Uh, but also as we do some management decisions, we thin out the forest, we can open up areas and those branches uh, flourish and, and uh, continue to grow. So often looking at the live crown can give us an idea of how much available light's coming in, but it also tells us about the overall health and potential for that tree. If we think about a tree, the leaves or needles being the solar panels, uh, the more they have, the better. But there is a balance between uh, the number of trees and productivity. Uh, so live crown is something we often like to record. Uh, very simple to do. We measure the total height of the tree and then we measure the height of the live portion. We're often looking for a side of the tree that has green branches on a conifer going all the way up. Uh, doesn't have to be completely around the bowl, but uh, when that starts all the way to the top, we take that uh, live crown portion, divide it by the total height of the tree, and it gives us our percentage of live crown. Something very easy, often we can just look back and uh, get a height and then estimate 70, 60, 50%. But it's just a really good thing to have because it starts to paint a picture of how this forest looks and the different layers that we're creating. So that first top layer, the overstory, um, below that the shrub layer. We can kind of assess those, but uh, it gives a nice clear picture uh, if we start, start talking about how much uh, live branch or a live uh, crown is in those trees. So that's something very easy and simple to do, but something else that we like to do uh, is look up and uh, see how much sunlight potential can be coming through with those interlocking leaves and needles. And that's gonna kind of give us an idea how much production we would see in the understory, the shrub layer. Uh, and then below me, kind of that, that three foot or, or so, kind of that smaller, the fine grasses, herbs and forbs, um, gives us again an idea how much potential energy is coming in uh, through that canopy and getting down into the ground. So there's a couple ways we do that. Um, a very common tool that uh, foresters and, and folks out in the field carry, uh, it's a reflecting mirror. Uh, this is called a spherical densiometer. Uh, this is a concave one. Uh, some are convex. There's a different uh, shape to the lens. This one goes in. But uh, the basic concept, if you can't quite see in there, is there's a reflective mirror and there's a little grid system. And by holding this out, there's some instructions here. and. and Pretty simple, holding it out uh, about a foot to a half a foot away from your face. There's a little uh, level bubble on the mirror. You hold it out, and as you sight into the mirror, what you'll see in that reflection is what is right above you. And hopefully you can see that. You can see the light and the, uh, the, the sky and the clouds, as well as the needles. You basically start counting the space occupied in these little squares. Uh, each square you can break into four quadrants. So the left, 
the right, top left and right, bottom left and right, and you start counting. Now it's easy to count if you have a lot more tree up there, you count the number of spaces that uh, have, are occupied by sky. And, and some simple math calculation, it comes up with a percentage. So if you could see nothing, if there was zero light in that reflection, so I couldn't see any cloud or blue sky, that would be a 100% canopy closure. So no light is coming in. And, and what I'd expect with that is there wouldn't be a lot of, uh, you know, biological activity in the way of understory growing uh, in this forest. So, uh, kind of a nice device, uh, not very difficult. Instructions are printed right on the lid, uh, fairly straightforward, a nice repeatable, um, straightforward device. Uh, another device we have, and I'll talk about why we start using these instead of just the simple one that, that, that I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, I like to call this, some people call it a rhino horn, a moose horn. Uh, I call it often a rhinoscope. Uh, the concept here is this is the device that we look through and it's got some mirrors that allow us to see straight up into the canopy. In, you know, in a way like a periscope, but looking straight up. If I held that up to the camera, you can kind of get an idea. Uh, there's a couple levels in there. And again, just like that uh, spherical densiometer with the mirror reflecting, uh, the theme here is there's some consistency. So having the levels in there, make sure I'm holding this at the right angle. But uh, with this, I'm just looking up and it's calibrating my eye to just a certain patch uh, of the canopy. So I look up there, I have to kind of just use a general assessment. We often have these little charts that might have percentages, uh, what we'd see 25, 50, 75 percent crown closure. What does that look like through this? So I kind of look up there and have to make an assessment. Mm, I see about 80% the way I'm looking now appears to be needle because I'm underneath Douglas fir. Um, so I'd say I have about an 80% canopy closure. Uh, again, pretty simple tool. Both of these aren't necessarily expensive. Um, oddly enough, uh, you'd think which one costs more. They're about the same. Um, but the, the neat thing about them are uh, they're repeatable. Uh, if I use this uh, every day to take a measurement, I I'm usually getting a representative sample uh, of kind of, even though it's not a perfect sample, I I'm getting the same uh, area captured every day if I keep doing it the same. If I were to hand these to someone else, I'd expect similar results, but there might be the way they use them and hold them and just the way they're assessing and counting a little variability. But uh, the reason we use these devices is uh, they're repeatable. Uh, something else I could use is I could pull out uh, my cell phone and take a picture. Uh, and that's probably the most accurate way. There's software packages out there and actually special lenses. And that's where the expense starts to go up. I don't know if I said those, those devices I just showed you are about $150. So they're not necessarily cheap, but they're not very uh, you know, expensive. They're quite durable. Uh, there's no battery, power, uh, pow battery powering those uh, devices. But if I got a camera out here, took a picture, brought it into a computer. I could, could analyze that, especially using a special lens called a fisheye. I can really get a very accurate description, but that is expensive, time consuming, uh, and takes technology. Another thing that we have when we're talking canopy and another device we often use is, is, is a solar, and I think the term is a solar pathfinder. Um, but basically, uh, when I take that sample, I'm only capturing one moment in time. You know, the wind could be moving. Um, it could be the different seasons, but that's just one place the sun is at. And so as the sun moves across the sky, that light can enter different ways. So the canopy closure doesn't necessarily tell you how well the light is coming in. It just gives you a potential. So a, a better way to do that is actually to go out all day long and there's devices that will record the incoming solar radiation to a certain spot on the ground. Uh, and that can, again, relate to that, that crown closure. So depending on the level of accuracy you want, the purpose you're taking the measurement, again, we're often doing this just to paint a picture of what the forest looks like. So to understand how much mass and, and energy uh, can be captured in the overstory, the larger trees, how much of that gets down to the forest floor, it, it allows us to, to create those management decisions to uh, look at the whole forest, habitat, and um, how much growing space is for the trees. 
But you know what? There, there's a lot of other devices that, that you can use out there. And, and this is my favorite one. Favorite one. It got a little abused here in the rain. Um, an old uh, paper towel, or you could just use a toilet paper tube. Um, pretty straightforward. We're just trying to calibrate our eye, right? So if I take this tube and just look straight up the best I can, you know, I could put a level on it or do something. Um, I could put a string that would hang straight down. So as I kind of, you know, lots of ways, but let's, let's be serious. It, it's, it's a roll of, from a toilet paper uh, or, or paper towel uh, ending. So if I look straight up, what that does, just like that rhinoscope or moose horn, it focuses my eye and it gives me the same look every time. So if I was to be able to come up with a way to level this to make sure I'm looking straight up every every time, uh, I basically have something out of the recycling um, basket that works just fine. And I can look up and get that same assessment and I'd say, yeah, that looks about 80%. So there's lots of tools you can use to look at that overstory. <clears throat> This is something from a former video when I talked about doing plots. Remember, this was that 10,000th of an acre. Sometimes we like to do the ground and sample it by just tossing that and looking at what area it exposes. Kind of a neat thing about this rhinoscope uh, moose horn that I really like is that not only can you look up with it, it angles my eye up at, an, at, uh, at the canopy, but I can actually turn it straight over using those uh, levels and I can look down just in front of my feet and I can capture what's in front of me. And I can then do a vegetation assessment on the ground. So it kind of works the same. If I'm just trying to get maybe not plant species, this is a 10,000th of an acre. So if you know, I counted three sword ferns in here, I'd have three in a 10,000th of an acre. So I'd be 30,000 uh, sword ferns per acre if I want to do plants. But if I just want to get general ground cover, how much of the canopy is up above me? How much of the forest floor is covered below me? Uh, and I toss this on the ground. Uh, this is a lot easier device. So I can measure both. So I typically would go to the area, that plot center that we were going to put in, measure the trees, look up, even look down if I want, or just do an assessment. And um, works really well. Uh, same thing could happen with my uh, trusted uh, paper towel tube, uh, I could look down. It's a little small in that sense, so I might want to shorten that up a little uh, and use a shorter tube. But uh, again, this is actually a really great way to, to do canopy assessments and see uh, what's above and below um, the forest. So uh, a couple of uh, things, canopy closure, it's from zero to 100%, 100 meaning uh, totally blocking out the sky and probably very, very little light coming in. Uh, obviously zero wide open space. Um, live crown ratio, the same thing. It's on a zero to a hundred. Uh, when you get down to, a, or I guess up to zero, uh, that usually means the tree's dead. But uh, as we approach that live crown ratio, we like to keep it in that 10 to 15% or higher range. Because again, thinking about those, uh, needles and leaves, those are the solar panels, the power source behind that plant or tree in this case. And as it starts to get really lean and thin, um, you know, the, the tree can struggle, uh, but that 10 to 15% uh, or greater is what we're usually looking for, uh, for a strong, vigorous tree. Not to say they won't come back from it, but just a general recommendation. So, um, live crown ratio, canopy closure, Two more of those measurements along with diameter and height that we're gonna be taking when we do our uh, forest inventory plot real soon. So look for that activity to come and uh, hopefully you get outside and enjoy. Thanks a lot.